Okay, super. All right. So I know let's very first, I know everybody's adding to their, their bucket list. You and your wife been working on them. You and Mia? Harry? Yeah. Yeah. Her, her name's actually Maya. Oh, Maya. Sorry. Okay. All right. I'm going to write that down and make myself a note because I'm sorry. I keep saying yeah, that. Just write down M-Y-A. M-Y-A. Maya. Okay. That's that's not how she spells it, but that's a good, that's a phonetic spelling. Okay, there you go. I apologize. Okay, so, lots of people. Have you guys been working on your bucket list? Yes, yes. I have a, uh, a page that, uh, if I were to complete, would, uh, would, would change my life completely. All right, here we go. Let's rock and roll. Okay. And you two have been working on them, so keep adding to them, okay? It's supposed to be open-ended. You'll okay. hear about something new. You'll remember something you wanted to do as a child. I mean, like, different things come from different places. Right. Okay, so let's, let's pull out the tracker. Everybody printed one off, right? You have a clean one in front of you? Yep. I got to get mine, but I'll be right back. So it's really, really important that we get you creating really good success habits. Because I can give you all the training in the world, but if you're not applying what I teach you, you just come and you feel good and then you go and then the next week comes, you come and feel good, but you know, we need to actually accomplish something. Okay. So, um, let me explain one more time what kind of activities that you're putting on the tracker. So your call every day, you need to be looking at your list, your bucket list. We will switch that up to more specific business goals soon. But for now, we just need to keep your, your energy and your motivation and your excitement level high, okay? So as we give you different things to do, it makes you want to do the uncomfortable things. It gives you a reason to do uncomfortable things, okay? So the second one is to make sure that you're reading something inspirational. I personally suggest two different things. One, things that increase your product knowledge. And the other one, some kind of personal development, um, somebody, you learn from somebody's success. Anita, the one you, something about failure, do it anyway. Yes, that's great, okay. Our positive thinking, one of my other failure books is called Failing Forward, which is one of my absolute favorite success principles. Um, last lecture by Randy Pausch. I mean, there's a list mile long of books, okay. Um, even your scripture, even your Bible study, those kind of things could be good too, as long as they keep you motivated, not guilt-ridden, okay? Mm -hmm. So depending on what version of the Bible you do or how you right. interpret it, okay? God mm -hmm. wants you to ask for what you want, okay? Um, mm -hmm. So the next three boxes are boxes for you to choose habits that help you get to your goals, Okay. There are things that can be do, done multiple times a week. They're activities. Does that make okay. sense? Okay. So, and they can be for personal goals and business goals. So anything from, um, you know, things that have to do with making phone calls to your team, making new contacts, um, all those kind of things. It's good to do daily planning. It's good to do exercise. There's all sorts of different things you can put in there, okay? But they, they're they all about creating habits, all right? So tell me a couple of the things that each of you would put in those boxes to so make sure we're on the same page. Well, mine's easy because I haven't uh, begun it yet. I'm still uh, learning uh, about what the tracker is and how to use it. Okay, so what activities are you putting in there, Terry? Uh, I mean, what activities have I put in there? What activities do you plan to do this upcoming week? Okay. Yeah, I made a list here. Um, so you just need three. You just need three new activities to start making okay. One was uh, making a list. Of things uh, to do? Your daily list? Yeah, uh, people. No, a list of oh, people. Oh, list of Okay. So when it's something that, um, that, that's a great example. Let me tell you how you do that instead. Some people say, for example, they're going to pick four days a week they're going to exercise, and you just check off the four days. If you have, how many people do you want to 
is it people you want to meet this week or people you want to contact? Like names you already know. Yeah, yeah, uh, names I already know. People names that I can already know. contact. Okay, so um, what I would do is in the where it says target points at the top. It's actually the second line down. It says target points. You guys all see where I'm looking? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I would put in how many people you plan on contacting. I'd put the number. So let's say it was 12. Okay. You put 12 in the target. And then, you know, let's say on Wednesday you get on the phone and you contact five. I'd put five slash, you know, hashtag or what would you call them? checks, marks, whatever, yeah, for, um, you know, contacting them. And then let's say on Saturday, you contact the other seven, you put the seven marks in there. So you can do that kind of goal. It can either be how many days a week you want to do something or how many times in a week you want to do something. Okay. Is that, do you see that it's, either way is fine. So how many people would you like to contact next week? Um, <clears throat> let's try 10. 10. Okay. So write 10 in your target box. Okay. What other habits would you like to create this week, Carrie? Um, now these could be uh, per personal or business, right? Uh-huh. <clears throat> well, I'd like to, uh, I like to keep a, uh, a regimen in, a regimen in terms of exercise. So that would involve uh, weight training or and or uh, uh, distance running. Okay, great. So you just need to set a specific goal, whatever it is. You can change it next week. That's the thing, guys. Like this is just for seven days. If that didn't work, if it was more than you needed to, if it was not enough, if you need to totally change gears, this is one week. Okay, you can switch next week. So this is this is not a long-term commitment. <laughs> okay. This is one week of trying to get consistent about what you want to do. Okay. okay. Clear as mud? Yep. Okay. So all right, Terry, and then you pick your third one and put your your um, your target points. Oh, I forgot the word for a minute. Your target points in there. Okay, yeah. Anita, what, what three actions do you plan to put in there? Um, well, I have exercise. Okay. Um, my God time. Okay. And then I'm just making sure that's happening. Um, and then um, I'd like to contact uh, two people a day. Two people a day. Okay. Anita, I'm going to give you a little challenge to um, sometimes you can choose how you want to do it because everybody's personality is different. Okay. Sometimes if you go two days and you haven't contacted anybody, you just throw the whole thing out the window. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I would suggest maybe you put 14 contacts and you say, I'm going to do it three days in the week because you're not out every day. Um, Sometimes we just don't want to do it every day. Um, sometimes we forget. Um, I, I need you to be able to allow yourself to like to to expect to do that every single day. Sometimes wears us out, and we just don't always want to think about business. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I was. I'm sorry. I was more thinking five days out of the seven, oh, not every day. Fine. But yeah, it can be five into the okay. so. I just want you to think about the two different ways to approach it. If you want to do two, five days a week, that's totally fine. But I want you to really recognize how you feel doing it. If it's okay. feeling more like a have to instead of get to, um, you might want to rephrase it. Not that you do the action, you don't do that action, but allow yourself, you know, if you get three one day, tomorrow you only have to do one. Or if you get four out of the way, there's one day you don't have to work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's that's what I want to make sure that people realize that it's not about it, it, you just need to work at some point, but you don't have to work all day every day. You really don't. But you right. have to choose when you're going to work. 
Okay. Okay. Clear as mud. Yep. Makes sense. Okay. Perfect. All right. And, um, okay. Anita, how are you doing on those daily, those week? Yeah. Daily habits. What things do you plan on putting in there? You mean Melissa or I thought that. Did I say Anita? (laughs) Sorry. I was totally thinking Melissa. I was like, wow. I got kicked out, but I'm pretty sure they were talking about talking to Anita at the time. <laughs> yep. Okay, Melissa. Uh, my one of mine is exercise. It's just something I need to get back into the habit of doing. Okay. Um, and I'm torn on my other two, but one is just to talk genuinely to five people. Okay. Nice. Uh, okay. not. Not just the highs and buys, but like a, even if it's a complete stranger, just a quick meaningful, how are you doing, and actual interest in how they're doing. Right. Um, and this one's a stretch one for me, so I'm torn putting it on there. But if I want to make, if I want to grow this, I got to do it, is to just call three people from my names list. So it's a small number, but it's a start for me. Okay. This is why I want, if you're going to do this, I want you to do it differently than like, I can see the mental part of you right now. Okay. Uh Um, I think you should wait till I help you with the phone calling system. So you feel like you have a way to do it. That's genuine and authentic. Um, I would like to see you plan an event where you can have people come and so it kind of takes the level down of being face to face and you feeling like they tell you yes or no. And it's like, now what do I say when they say no? Okay. Mm-hmm. It's in a group. Sometimes it's easier for you to take the no's and easier for them to say no if it's not their thing. Gotcha. Okay. And I, I would love for you to look through like your Facebook page and look through people's thing. And I want you to pick, 10 people who have done some traveling this summer. Okay. Okay. We're going to target this a little more instead of you like shooting randomly, not knowing where to go. Okay. Gotcha. Let, let's, let's like be a little more strategic about this. So okay. I don't want you to make any phone calls. I okay. want you to think a little bit more about who would make sense to talk to about this. If you see someone with a big family that has traveled, if you see someone that's retired, that's traveled, if you see, you know, they went farther than the Oregon coast or, you know, Seattle. Okay. If they went mm-hmm. somewhere, those are the kind of people that we say, okay, how much money did you spend on that? Would you like to know a little bit more about maybe saving money if you want to go next summer? Okay. Let's, okay. let's, be a little more think outside the box and think smart instead of hard. Okay. How does so, that, like, how does that pick feel? those 10 people to get them in one room at the same time or to pick those 10 people to like just have a conversation with? I want you to pick 10 people. I just want you to find 10 people. It seems like it makes sense to talk to Maybe we'll okay. do a group thing. Maybe we'll do one-on-one. I want you to brainstorm a little bit about the group thing. I mean, even if you throw a luau, I mean, like if you have to make it fun or you know what, we're going to do a cultural night and I'm going to introduce you to three foods from different countries that um, are travel spots that are on sale for the next month. I don't know exactly how your program works, but you have this food thing that you can throw in there and make this fun. Melissa, you have a niche. Okay. Okay. So they want to come and try your good food, even if they don't want your program. Gotcha. Okay, so you're doing this. I should call three people, and you you sound like you would sooner, you know, um, slit your fingers open and put lemon juice in them. Okay, I mean, it does not. You don't sound even the least bit excited about what can come from it. Let's at least like if you saw people at travel, you like you know what? They went to Hawaii. I should totally talk to them about where they want to go tropical next and how much they can save. Like, doesn't that feel different? Yep. Yeah, it does. Okay. So 
I want you to work okay, on that. Give me Facebook and I'm like, I, I want to tell them, but I'm too scared to tell them. So I need to tell them. Okay. <laughs> like one family did Hawaii and they're in DC right now. It's like, right. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> but see, that's okay. It's like, but if they sign up like this fall, then they can have all this money and all this stuff like prepared for next summer and be set to go. Right. And the thing is, this is a perfect time to hit them on it because that sounds kind of harsh. It's a perfect time to introduce them <laughs> to it because they're excited about the cool thing they just did and they want to do it next summer. And maybe they want to go three places instead of two and this will make it so they can travel more because they save some money. Okay. Okay. And the thing is you can call and say, Hey, I understand you just went to Washington DC. Tell me about how fun that was. What kind of plans do you have next summer? Da da da. If they have a plan and you go, you know, you can save them some money. Why on earth would they not want to hear about that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Does, does that strategic plan like feel authentic without feeling salesy? Yeah, no, it does. Okay. So That's let's fair. do that. All right. Okay. So I would like to introduce you to my friend Elizabeth and to AJ. They are my doTERRA gals and they both happen to be in Oregon, different parts of Oregon, but they're my Oregon friends. So we have all sorts of people here. Okay. So AJ and Elizabeth, we've been talking about the tracker. Hopefully you're getting the gist of it. Tell me real quick, two habits that you're going to add, you know, those little three empty boxes down at the bottom of the page. What habits are you adding to that to become a little more consistent this week? It can be personal or business goal related. AJ, go ahead. All right. This particular week, I am contacting one person a day about hosting a class. Okay. Basically, making events happen is one of my big things I need to do right now. And then my other one is actually just getting completely clean and organized one area of my house per day so okay. that I can focus more on my business with my house being more tidy. Okay. So I'm going to give you all a little tidbit on phone calling. Okay. How many of you, if you make one phone call, you get off, they said no. How many of you want to get on tomorrow? <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, you all raised your hand. Okay. <laughs> AJ, I'm going to give you a challenge because I know how much business you do and I know how brave you are. Okay. I'm actually going to give you a completely different challenge. So you all have different fear factors, different strengths, different places you're at mentally in your businesses. So understand that I don't give you all the same assignment for reasons, things, discussions you and I have had personally. AJ, I know what you want to do with your business and I'm going to challenge you to take one two-hour session this week and you're going to get a hold of five to seven people and then you're going to be done for the whole week and yeah that's on the phone again <laughs> one two-hour session you must find that two hours you tell your family if they interrupt you for any other reason but the house being on fire they're in trouble okay you have to train your family that you are at work when you're on the phone it's really important, really, really important, okay? You slam out these two hours. Let me tell you why. First of all, in two hours, I promise you, you will get some yeses. You will get some noes, but you'll get some yeses. You will end on a high. You'll want to get back on the phone next week. If you get on once a day and get a no, you're not going to want to get back on tomorrow, okay? You will end with some success, and it feels a lot better. I know that's why I'm so excited to do it because I took an hour of my time the other day and just messaged on Facebook because that's where most of my group of friends uh -huh. hangs out. I just messaged like 12 people who I thought it was even remotely possible and I got six yeses, three next month and three this month. And I was like, wow, that one hour time got me six events. Yep. That I can awesome. Okay. So you will only do this once this week for two hours. I don't care. I don't care if every one of them says no. I don't think they will. I don't even think that's even slightly possible. But whatever the outcome is, you only have to do it once. But for two hours, make sure your husband's home or you pay the oldest child or you put on their favorite movie, something. You have to make sure you're uninterrupted. Okay. 
and you have the list of names and their phone numbers and your calendar ready. Because the other thing is when we start and stop and start and stop and start and stop, it takes up far more time in our week. Then you're going to have all the time you want to organize and keep working on family stuff. Okay. That makes sense. And plus you only know you have to do it once a week. That's why Melissa, no way are you making one or three or whatever phone calls a day that will not work for you. Okay, I will never get you back on the phone again. Uh-uh. Okay. So AJ, tell me one okay, clean your house. Okay, perfect. Okay, Elizabeth darling. So tell us what daily activities you plan to do. Um, well I have a vendor event coming up, so kind of organizing for that. Um and so just kind of doing inventory, making sure everything's ready, set, go. Um, okay, so I'm going to tell you, that's going, that's going to go on the right-hand side of your page for a once-a-week thing. Okay. Okay, that, that's more of a one-time thing you give yourself five points for. Okay. So um, the, these other ones down here, there's going to be things you're going to do three to five, seven times a week. It can be anything you want. They can, it can be, I made my family dinner and didn't buy a frozen pizza or something. I mean, it can be anything you want. So okay. what, would, what would you like on the bottom there? Something you're going to do a couple times a week. Um, well, I'm cleaning my house as well. Got the boys' room all organized, so now it's onto my office, which is my disaster zone. Okay. Um, and then I'm as well doing follow-up calls. I've got a lot of people that I have information. I've sent the email out today, so now it's just kind of following up with them a little bit more than just email. Okay, so these, these things that go on here have to be, have, you have to find a way to quantify them. You can either put so many minutes into cleaning your office, or you can say it's going, I'm gonna feel like a 10 when I walk in here, or I'm going to these many people. Um, I'm going to contact this many people off of that email list. And you can check off that you actually talked to 20, whatever it needs to be. But you've got to have like a number that you can quantify it to say, yes, I did it. Okay. Does that make sense? So okay. Probably would be like 20 minutes in the office is all I can handle without going crazy in there. Okay. Um, and then my goal was kind of like you were saying to set down and just pick a number. I was going to set down and just contact 15 people and see what they had. So then you can just check off in the day. Okay. I, I caught this many people home until you get to 15. Okay. Okay. And um, if you can, I would definitely do it in a one or two hour block. You can definitely do it in one block of time. Um, with what you're doing, you might need two different sessions like one during the day and one during the evening but um you shouldn't need to do it more than twice two days okay mm -hmm. make sure you stay on the phone until you have some success so you want to get back on again next time okay okay so on the right hand side you have things that can be once a week um go on a date it can be your weekly planning it can be all sorts of different things it can be you're going to do one event all sorts of things can go in there. Those are worth five points. You add across the target points, and you add across what you actually accomplish, divide one into another, and that gives you the percentage at the end of the week. Okay. Clear as mud? Yeah. Yep. Okay, perfect. All right, so everybody keep working on those habits. Let's move forward here. Okay, and AJ and Elizabeth, you're working on um, bucket list, correct? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, so one of the things that we're kind of talking about is I believe in two different types of goals. They're called end result goals, and they're called effort goals. Okay, your effort goals are the ones you're putting on your tracker. Now, if you would like, there's blank spaces on your paper. You can put your whys in there, you want this, okay? Like some of your immediate whys, how it's gonna feel to get to there, a level in your company, like Melissa, I'd put on there, you want your four people and what you're gonna get from that, okay? Put okay. in a couple whys in there and how it's gonna feel and have it on your page and it helps you to stay motivated. Okay. Okay? 
All right. Okay, so what we're going to talk about is how important it is to ask questions. Several of you have been on my finding new customers um, class that I had. Anita and Melissa, I don't think you two have, right? No. No, okay. That's something that I would like to talk to you, the two of you about having for your team. Okay. 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 And um, it's really fun. That's kind of why these other folks are with me because they like that class. <laughs> so, um, but it's a fun one and it teaches a lot about asking questions, um, helps people think a little bit differently about meeting people. But one of my rules is to start thinking about when you're out and about that your whole goal is to make new friends. Okay, the whole goal is just to be more friendly, not to make everyone you meet uh, a new client, okay? And there was a gentleman at my house the other night, I did a youth goal setting program and parents came with youth. And the dad said, the reason I don't do sales is because my dad did. And my dad said, everyone I meet is a potential customer. And I said, no, my attitude is everyone I meet is a potential friend and maybe some of them will turn into customers, okay? Um, I, I don't work that way. I don't believe it's authentic and we don't have something that every single person needs. So I don't think that makes any sense. We want to find the people who do need what you have, but in the meantime, you're going to meet a lot of amazing people who are going to inspire you and you're going to have, it's just neat. It feels so good to get to meet people who have such neat stories and they do. Everyone has a story. Everyone has a challenge they've overcome. Everyone has a different talent. Everyone has a different lifestyle. It's so much fun. So make sure that you're just taking the opportunity to get to know more people, okay? And I'm gonna tell you some really easy ways to do that, okay? These will make you feel authentic and these are the kind of things we're gonna start asking people at classes, at parties, at, you know, when we meet them at Target, um, recruit potentials and all different types of people, okay? now. The thing that's so fun to understand that the one word, you know the one word that's said 400 times more than any other word in the English language is? Linda. Would it be the word I? Yep, it is the word I, Terry. Yep, I, okay? So people feel important when they get to talk about themselves. So we definitely want to let people talk about themselves and there's ways to do that. So one of the very first things that I tell people is one of the easiest ways to strike up a conversation or start to get to, to know someone is give a compliment, okay? It can be on their hair, their clothes, their shoes, their purse, their well-behaved kids. Don't lie and be insincere, no. But um, have you ever watched this kid, what is this kid's name? Something president, anyway, he's this cute black kid just has this goofy way of saying things. He goes, if you can't think of anything nice to say, you ain't thinking hard enough. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it's kind of funny. But a compliment is a great way to just kind of break the ice, start talking to the person in front of you. Just like I said, start making a goal to make new friends and talk to people. Don't care for a week or so if any conversation turns into a business one you've got to allow yourself to just start talking to more people, okay? You're all friendly, you're all delightful, people like you, okay? Just start talking a little bit more. So a compliment's a great way to get started. The next one that you need to understand is your questions as much as possible need to be open-ended. When we ask people yes or no, okay, so here's a silly example. Let's say someone has something, you're at Target, and you've got the little conveyor belt thing and there's something on there you've never tried, eaten in a laundry detergent, something, and you wanna know if they, what they think of it. Instead of asking, do you like that? Is that something you've eaten before and you liked? You say, hey, what do you think of this product? Is this, you know, that gives them the opportunity to give you an opinion versus just a yes, no, okay? So questions like, what do you think about this? How do you feel about this? Um, how many times have you used it? Questions that open a conversation. And it takes practice. You'll find yourself 
like practice this with your significant other, practice this with your kids, practice it with all sorts of people. And you'll find yourself you're like, dang, I asked a yes, no question again. But it, you, it gives you time to stop and practice and rephrase it because, you know, we're not trying to sell to it. So practice with everyone you can. Try to do open-ended questions. And, you know, there's all sorts of things that you can ask about. Um, now, when I'm trying to get into a conversation a little bit about a product or just about them in general, one of the things that people are trained to do is they're trained to try to find a problem that you can fix, right? Okay. Like my doTERRA friends down here, there's all these medical issues that people can have and the whole goal is to find a medical issue so then we can tell them about an oil, which totally makes sense. Um, the thing is, people, how to explain this? People like to talk about their problems if it's their idea to talk about their problems. They, they don't like you to prompt them, go, you have a problem, right? Because I want to fix it. It's like, no, I don't. I'm fine. Okay. You know how somebody's come to you and told you about a problem and then you go and, and remind them, hey, you know, I have a solution for you on this problem. No, no, it's not that bad, you know? Like if you have kids, like they're the ultimate ones to turn back and go, no, my problem isn't as big as you're saying, all right? So what I like to start with is a positive question. What do you like about, what's the best part about this? What's the best part of this area of your life? Um, you know, so if you have health, what, what's going on with your, you know, what's the best part of your health? Or um, what, what do you do to feel healthy? Or what do you do, you know, if you're talking about travel, what do you do to take a break? Which you're out, what, what do you do to um, take some time for yourself? Um, ask them what good is happening, okay? And what happens is if you're asking them, you know, tell me a little bit about your kids and, and, and what do you do to stay healthy during the school year, okay, is something you could ask. They inevitably so often, or if you're asking, tell me a little bit about what do you do to have some downtime for yourself? People, do you hear how that question, like they'll tell you the answer, but then they'll go, oh man, it's so hard to stay healthy. My kids get these ear infections. They get this, this, you know, so hard to take time for myself. Um, this is busy. It's so expensive, blah, blah, blah. Um, Terry has some great products for help um, when it comes to getting fit, you know, tell me what to do to take care of yourself. And so often people will go into telling us what's wrong or what they don't have. Okay. Do you see how that leads it in without us sounding like negative Nellies? Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a nice way. Now, if people don't go into their needs, what you want to do next is ask, Hey, if there's one thing you could do for yourself, if there's one health issue you're curious, if there's something besides a prescription to take care of, if you could change one thing about your physical health and start improving that, what would it be? You try to minimize it and ask if there's just one little thing. Like, so you're, you're not making much of an assumption that there's a big problem, but you're just allowing them to tell you if there's something that they need. And it's neat because They've told you all the positive stuff, and then they can kind of tell you a whole that they have. And that's where you can come in. But at that point, we still want to keep asking a few more questions. And when you do find a whole, these are, this is my three-part question. You ask, what have they been using? So let's say they say they're trying to lose weight, Terry. What have you used? What are you using now? What have you, how well is it working? What have you used in the past or thinking about using now? And then what it does is allows them to show all the ways that they have tried to solve this problem on their own, okay? When we instantly come in with a solution without asking those questions first, it kind of makes people feel like they're unintelligent and like they didn't try everything they could have tried, like they should have known about this. I have a solution for you, okay? It just doesn't go over well, okay? After they've answered those three questions, so remember it's, what have you tried? How well is it working? What else have you thought about trying? Then we can gently say, you know what? I had someone in a similar situation and there's this product that worked for them. 
I would love to see if it might be a good fit for you. Okay. So many sales programs will be like, it's the perfect thing. I know it'll work for you. Like they over positive it. And the person, people like to feel like they're unique and like their problem is so unique that you can't possibly have the solution for them sometimes. Okay. Sometimes they get hopeful, but they want to feel like they're going to get to make the decision as to whether or not it's a good fit for them versus we're trying to convince them it's something they should do. Do you feel how different that is? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I know for Anita and Melissa, like we've talked a lot about kind of fear of not of rejection and fear of failure and that, how much does this bring things down for you guys? It, it helps. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had a, I had a friend that I did the exact what you were talking about with her this week and felt very rejected, very, um, I don't know, but it just felt like our friendship wasn't good. And I was trying to over, you know, I did the exact thing you were talking about and looking at it differently. Now I'm like, huh, I should have went at that a, a different way. Right. So, you know, and for example, okay, at my house, we homeschool. Okay. That's something that just works for us. And so I'll have people ask me about things or they'll talk to me about education because they know I kind of do it a little bit different. But even when they do, I'm trying to practice the, can I offer a solution or can I offer an idea, not a solution because they don't like to feel like I have the solution and they don't. Can I, can I share an idea with you? When I say that and they give me permission their walls aren't up as much because they're like, well, I gave them permission, so I got to listen to it now. It just comes off a little bit different. They still might, their wall might be part way up, but it's not clear up here because they said yes. And you know you're going to have those people. I mean, you've had that time where you just needed to vent and someone tries to tell you a solution and you're like, I just needed to vent. I don't want to hear your advice right now. I just needed you to be my friend and listen. And I might say no, 90% of the time they don't, but then you know to keep your mouth shut and it just isn't the time. And then there's not that reject as rejected a feeling. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so these really help. The other one that you can, there's two more things you can do. Um, I love to find common ground with people, whether you're talking about how hot it is outside, a holiday coming up. Um, you know, I live in Washington six months ago, I could have talked to anybody about the Super Bowl and the um, Seahawks, you know, someone would have been talked to me and been nice to me, you know, talking about their favorite football team, any sort of common ground is a, another great place to start to get a conversation going. I love to ask people if they're from the area. I live in what's called Tri City. So there's three different cities here. I love to ask which one they're from, if they're originally from the area. Um, it's just kind of fun. The other thing is to ask their opinion about something. Um, that's another great way. So you have several different methods for opening up conversations and learning how to ask more questions. Okay. So I just want you to practice this. Melissa, do you have cooking classes this week? No. No. Okay. If you did. Okay. So whatever you're doing in your life this week, please ask more questions. Okay. Get in the habit. It could be one of your three things that you're going to ask 20 new people, as many open-ended questions as you can think of. This takes practice, but I promise you get better at it really fast and it feels really good. And it just doesn't matter for right now if you're talking about business, okay? Because the more you can talk to people and feel authentic and feel like you really tried to get to know them, that's the whole goal is to get to know them. And then if you find that they have something that you need, it's going to be so much easier to transition into that. Sound good? Okay. So um, there's a couple things that I want you to do. You need to take the opportunity. Oh, Melissa keeps popping off. I don't know what's up with her internet connection. Um, you need to take the opportunity to make a list of things that your business opportunity and your product offers okay so you're going to have ones that have to do with business which a lot of you will be real similar 
you know, it has to do with flexibility. It has to do with giving yourself a raise. It has to do with being your own boss. Um, it's a good idea that they really, really like the product. Um, there's lots of different things that have to do with your business opportunity that you need to ask them if any of those things are needs. Um, I usually could find, if I found person loved the product, if they had any sort of need financially or a couple of 500, you know, thousand dollars would be helpful. And then if they had any sort of personal, like they just need a little more kudos, you know, their mom would just change diaper 5,000 and you know, they surely won't give them an award for it. Or, you know, they, people like some personal, you know, like feeling recognized, um, depending on the person. But those are kind of some questions you want to ask. And I actually just put together a recruiting worksheet, which I'll be sharing with you. And we'll give you some more ideas. But you need to be thinking on those on your own so that you can, you can say them when you see an opportunity come up. Um, you need to put down five to 10 perks of your business, okay? your product. Um, what kind of things does it do and keep it general? You know, are you, you know, for Terry, for example, I know some of his products are great for people who are athletes. So, you know, finding out what kind of athletic goals they have, finding out what kind of health goals they have, what kind of medical issues, you know, things that they'd like to stop taking medication for. Um, you all have different things like that, that you need to be able to have questions. And we're going to use these questions in one-on-ones, in group things. Um, if you're doing a booth, there's all these different places that you can use these questions. So you want to get really good at them, okay? So that you can find people's needs. You know, we were joking, Anita and um, Melissa, you know, if you talk to somebody and they get motion sickness really easy, they hate to travel in their homebodies, well, you are not going to bring up travel, okay? You don't have to have the rejection because you're not going to bring it up to get rejected, okay? When you've asked questions and see you don't have anything for them, no, you you stop. You don't go there, okay? You, you don't have to go through unnecessary rejection. You can ask enough questions to have a pretty good idea if somebody's going to be interested in your product. You see what I'm saying? You don't have to go down that miserable road of, I'm just going to start, I call it infomercialing, tell people about your product so much, give them 16 reasons they should like it, hope one or two of those resonate with them, and still have them say no, and we're like, what did they not like about this? How, why don't they like what I like? You don't ever have to worry about that again, because you ask enough questions. If you find three needs, like this is why my doTERRA people love me so much, because I help them find three needs, you know? Whether there's issues that their children have, issues that their spouse has, issues they have, I have people that are trying to help their grandparents, you know, all these different medical issues, you ask enough questions, you can find three needs, you can find share three oils, and believe me, they're a new customer, okay? Whereas they have 75 different products. If they play infomercial game, they're going to talk a long time before they quit talking, and that person can be really annoyed, okay? So doTERRA people gets them right down, okay, now I can tell you which of the 75 oils is going to work for you instead of going through the whole thing, okay? So it's so important. So important that we ask questions for so many different reasons. So Terry, for example, on your stuff, you may have someone who has tried to lose weight before and when you understand what worked and what didn't work for them, instead of telling them automatically about your product, um, you can be very selective about the perks you share with them about your product because you know some of the things that worked for them and didn't work for them in the past. Those things are very important to know so that you can customize what you have to say, okay? You don't have to deal with as much rejection, I promise, <laughs> when you do these kind of things, all right? I mean, and even Melissa, we just need to start asking, hey, if you could travel anywhere in the next 12 months, where would you go? On a scale of one to 10, how badly would you want to go there? Who would you want to take with you? Okay. Is that something that's in your budget now? Would you like to know more about how to save money on that? Bam. Okay. It, it really, it. Wow. That was simple. <laughs> yep. Okay. And yet you didn't talk anything about your business. 
Right. But you saw how you're going to though, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if somebody says, I don't like to travel, you're not going to go there. That's the whole thing. Okay. Your conversion rate is going to skyrocket. Hmm. Nice. Okay. It's just, this is fun, guys. This is super fun. You have really neat products, every single one of you. Okay. So come up with those, those benefits. Okay. At the bottom of your page, five to 10 benefits of your business opportunity and of your product. Okay. And then start making open ended questions. Read them out loud to yourself. Force yourself to answer the question. Or you guys can, some of you can buddy up, okay? Ask each other the question and go, uh-uh, Anita, that's a yes, no question. We got to open that up, okay? You can have a yes, no if you have very specific follow-ups for both the no answer and the yes answer, okay? That's the only time that's allowed, but you got to have a follow-up to then open up the conversation. Now and then there's a yes, no that you can't avoid, but not very often, okay? You have 10 questions, nine of them are going to be, op are going to be open ended. All right. Mm -hmm. So I want you working really hard on this and really thinking about it, really practicing it. You don't have to practice it for your business this week though, when you're talking to just regular everyday people, you've got to work on them on paper for your business, but I just want you talking to people in the grocery store in every place that you go, just talking a little bit more. It can even be on Facebook. You can start asking more questions on Facebook that are open-ended questions. Practice, 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 practice. I promise it will get easier way faster than you can imagine. Okay, but you have to do it for it to get better. All right, mm -hmm. any questions on that? Nope. nope. Is everybody feeling a little more hopeful about what you can do? Mm -hmm. okay, that's the whole goal. We should start doing every day. We do a hopeful number one to 10. And at the end, let's see if it went up. Okay. <laughs> terrified you or got you a little more motivated. Okay. Um, but this is fun stuff, guys. Okay. I've talked to every single one of you. You know how long I took to ask you questions to find out what's in it for you. I, I don't want any of you as you know, as customers, if it's not the right thing, I am very, very serious about this for my own business and your business. Find the people who need what you have. Okay. Remember my little theory that one third of 1% of all the Americans in the United States is still a million people. You don't have to have a very big a percentage. Think your idea is a good idea for you to be very, very successful. Okay. There's a lot of people. And then we got Canada too. Okay. Got people all over the place. We have plenty of people to reach out to. Not everybody has to like the idea. It's no big deal. Okay. So when you can say, you know what, this thing I have is not for you. Then you see each other in the grocery store and it's not awkward. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Still friends. You can keep their phone number in your phone, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never use it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're just going to keep having fun with this guys. All right. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, tracker, if you would like to, you're more than welcome to text me at night and tell me you filled it in. Okay. okay. Set an alarm to fill in your tracker every day. You can do it in the morning, you can do it at night, you can do it at lunchtime, but set an alarm on your phone for when you're going to fill in your tracker. That's important. Okay. Habits and they're not easy to create. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, and then um, just keep working on those, okay? You guys are going to do it. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to see some great growth. We just got to get some of these little ways we say things and mindsets in place, okay? Okay. All right. Um, you're recording them, Michelle. This is recording. You're recording these? Yep. And how is it for us to be able to go back and see them too? Yes. Where do we do that? I will put a link on YouTube. There's a little thing I need to figure out. I want to make sure that just those who've been on it, well, and there's a group of you that have access to it. Some aren't always on here and some will be. Um, so I know there's a way to share it with just all of you. Okay. Technology, I got to go figure out. So hopefully we'll get that done okay. this week. Okay, Melissa. Okay, because I, 
I, for some odd reason, my internet keeps kicking me off and you guys freeze. So there's a good third of today that I'm totally lost. Okay. So. No problem. Well, I will get that to you. Okay. okay. Cool. All right. Sounds good. Terry, Thank I'll talk to you in an hour. Okay. Yes. All right. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.